Is it a frenum piercing or is it a scrotum piercing? Well, not really. It's kind of both. The lorem. And we're going to talk about that and cover that today on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 76. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to a level of expertise as someone who's been in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. Piercing we're going to talk about today is a male genitalia piercing. It's called the lorem. Um, before I get into that, if you are easily offended, um, not an appropriate age, or looking for some type of fun-filled sexual gratification, this is not the video for you. I am going to be discussing uh, male genitalia. If you have problems or issues with that or don't want to hear about it, please choose another video. Um, if it is not appropriate for you to watch anything that may have a slight sexual connotation to it, please, if you're not the right age, please watch something else. There are plenty of age appropriate videos on this very channel. Lastly, if you're looking for some type of sexual gratification, you're going to be disappointed. Sorry, this isn't that kind of video. With that out of the way, let's talk about what exactly a lorem is. A lorem is a piercing done at the base of the shaft of the penis um, where the penis and the scrotum kind of meet, kind of right here. Um, there's On most men, there's kind of a loose tissue, almost lobe-like tissue that hangs there, and the piercing is done through that, either using a ring or a sander barbell. The piercing has a history of this. Uh, I mean, it comes from uh, uh, Elaine uh, Angel. Great lady, uh, if you haven't read the Piercing Bible and you're a fan of body piercing or you're planning on getting into the industry or just you want to learn more, check out the Piercing Bible. It's a great book. There's a lot of great information in it from a lady that has really done a great deal to educate people and spread information that is factual to the general public. Just one of my, one of my heroes. Anyway, when she was working at Gauntlet in the late 80s, she was approached by Dan uh, Kupka, and I think I'm pronouncing that right. And Dan said something to the degree of, I want a, I, not a frenum, but a lorum. <laughs> and lorum is where the name comes from. So that's a little bit of a history lesson for you on this particular piercing. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to give you five advantages, five disadvantages, five fa pros, five cons, starting with the pros. Number one, this piercing can cause uh, some type of sexual stimulation. Uh, some people find it pleasurable, um, not only for themselves, but their partners. Uh, I've had mixed results over this over the years uh, in different feedback from clients. Some say that, yeah, it's great and wonderful. And other ones have said, I don't really, I don't notice it at all. Um, it really comes down to with any genital piercing, a lot of it comes down to what's going on here and the newness of the situation that it creates with this one, supposedly pulling on it or applying pressure to it makes uh, the skin kind of tighten up and makes it a little bit more sensitive. I don't know how practical that is. I don't know if that really is what's going on. Number two, uh, this piercing has a long history of healing without issue. It's a fairly quick heal at roughly about anywhere from usually about eight to 12 weeks. Um, doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Um, it's kind of shielded when the penis is flaccid, so it doesn't really come in contact with clothing as much as other piercings, uh, general piercings do. So it's kind of an easy heal. Number three, most men have the anatomy to do this piercing. Some are better choices than others. Um, a lot of it's if that fold of tissues there, that almost lobal area, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, just like a scrotum piercing or a frontum piercing, we're doing that outward layer of, of, of skin. We're not doing anything that's inside of that inner scrotal sac. Um, so it's not dangerous in any way, shape or form and pretty easy to perform um, if you know what you're doing. Not, that's not an excuse for you to go get 
a knitting needle out and try to do it to yourself. No. You really need to know what you're doing. But it's a fairly easy piercing to do. Usually very probatic and very, uh, very quick. Number four, this can be part of or start or be part of a grouping. Um, probably one of the most drastic or most uh, visually stimulating of all piercing groupings is that Jacob ladder that goes down to that lorem and then continues with a scrotum pier a set of scrotum piercings and ends with a couple gishes. Kind of a very drastic uh, uh, grouping of piercings um, in one that is pretty popular. Uh, this could start either a, a furnum Jacob's ladder or even a scrotum ladder. Um, it really depends on you which direction you want to go. Number five, probably one of the greatest things about any genital piercing, they're easy to conceal. This is a piercing that unless you specifically tell somebody or they're a partner who sees the area, they're not going to know that you have this piercing. It's something that you can keep secret um, and only share with people that you trust. Um, so it's not going to affect jobs. It's not going to affect your social standing, uh, family, etc. It is your special little secret. Okay, with the pros out of the way, let's move on to the cons. Number one, uh, not everyone finds this piercing stimulating, uh, and it tends to be just more decorative. Like I said, everybody's different. Everybody's wired differently. With some people, they claim it does all these wonderful things. Other people, it's like, yeah, it's there. I like the way it looks. But beyond that, it's nothing really special. Number two. Uh, this one does have a possibility of rejection or migration, more so migration if a lot of pressure and trauma is done to the piercing. Sometimes they'll move just slightly because of the softer tissue. It's very, it's something that you need to consider when it's marking that it may not be in exactly that same spot um, once it goes to its complete heel. In most cases, usually this isn't an issue, but it is a possibility. Number three, it can interrupt or cause issues when wearing a condom because of the location that's usually where the condom kind of ends. And sometimes it'll be a little bit below it. You should probably, if uh, that's going to be an issue with you, you should probably discuss that with your piercer and adjust the position to a point where it's not going to cause a lot of issues. Um, I just know that I had one client where we did a little bit higher by his request and he had all kinds of issues with it twisting and turning as he was applying the condom and had it on there and it didn't feel great as he put it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing it didn't. Number four, must practice safe sex for at least the first six months, which means latex barrier. And after that, anytime you switch partners. With any genital piercing, um, you are creating scar tissue. Scar tissue is not as strong as normal unscarred tissue. It is more prone to tears and et cetera, especially in your strenuous activities like intercourse. There's always a possibility, even after the piercing, you've had the piercing for years, to cause a slight tear in the piercing and then have an exchange of a virus and then catch an STD. So when switching partners, do what you're supposed to do, which is practice safe sex, boys and girls and everyone else. However you define yourself. Number five, uh, these bleed off and on, not maybe as bad as other pier genital piercings, but they can for up to five days. Uh, during that time, I usually wear, suggest wearing a sanitary napkin or pad to cut down on staining clothing. It also cuts down the amount of moisture in the area, which cuts down the amount of bacteria, and it gives you a little extra cushioning while it's going through its tenor phase. One final thing before we get done here, um, just basically because I've been noticing over time that some of these subjects come up in comments. Um, if you're somebody that uses any type of bindings like straps or rings and they're generally located in the area um, or involved in, in activities like uh, that involve bondage and S&M or what have you, yes, you're going to probably have to remove the jewelry whenever you're doing those activities. Having that pressure against a healing or healed piercing even can damage the piercing. The piercing can also get caught up in what's going on. If you're heavily active in something like that, that's going to be an issue. You might want to consider a different piercing that is not going to be directly in that area if that's where you normally apply your uh, favorite item to, just to let you know. 
Um, in some cases, you might find it a little bit easier to do it a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and allow for that. Be honest with your piercer is mainly what I'm getting at. We have heard it all. We're not going to judge you for uh, having less than whatever society considers normal um, types of relationships. We would much rather know if something in your lifestyle is going to cause an issue and adjust to fix that beforehand than have to deal with it afterwards. So that's it. That's everything I have to say on the Lauren piercing. I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was entertaining. Um, and you walk away feeling entertained and edified. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. We like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. Then you won't miss out. You'll feel in the know. Of course, if you're a stylish individual that likes swag, that likes t-shirts, likes tote bags, likes throw pillows, likes beach towels and phone cases, check out our merch store. Especially if you like body art oriented stuff. Roughly about 12 designs there. I think more. I, I need to actually count them someday. Uh, various different colors you can choose from and various different types of products. Uh, great stuff. I've been spending all my money there lately. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Go out there, do something fun. Enjoy yourself. Just do it safely. Practice your safe distance. Uh, wear your face mask. Wash your hands. And let's get through this. Uh, and hopefully, by the time you're watching this, it'll all be over. And we can go back to normal. Till then, have a good day. Thank you for watching. And we'll talk to you later.